Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another Singles Ink Profile. This is one I'm really super excited about. I've been hearing such good things for so long about Waterman inks. I can't believe that this is uh, probably the first profile I've done of a Waterman ink, although I do have a couple of samples in-house. Um, this was sent to me by a pen friend. Uh, her initials are KS, and thank you very, very much. So, it's just a beautiful bright purple. Let's see what how it does. Let's do what we do here. <laughs> okay, let's put it in the water test. Um, uh, you know, people like Troy LaPlante have talked about Waterman, the pens and the inks for so long, and Larry has talked about them, and, you know, I, I'm surprised I hadn't uh, done more with them, you know, sooner, but I just had so many samples to look at. Okay, we'll let that do its thing. I just wanted to quick tell you that Fountain Pen Revolution Blue Black uh, stayed pretty much the way you saw it on that video, the last ink profile I did, and it was semi-permanent. So it, just a little of the color washed away, but you can read what, what was written there after a fully dunked test. Okay, so let's get right in. Let's get into the Rhodia Gold Book and see what we got here. Um, I thoroughly have been enjoying this ink, and there won't be a drop left of that sample when I get done. I can tell you that much. Okay, so here it is on a little sample of Tamoy River paper, and it's going to be really hard to show you what I see because there's a subtle edging that's green, and I think another of the papers I did will show it better, but um, it, it's just a very interesting, I, I think you'd call it a sheen or an edging. It's very cool. So here, here's the ink with a broad nib and the um, serendipity. That's a Yo-Wo nib. And here it is in the fine nib. So it's it's nicely saturated. It's, a, it's what I call a real purple. And I said that about Tasha Murasaki, but I feel even more so about this Waterman Tender Purple. This is what I think purple's supposed to be. Traditional, you know. And th not that I don't like other purple shades. I do everything from magenta all the way up to dark purple. But I did find that this is a very affordable ink. Um, Jet Pens has it 50 mil for $12. Amazon a 50 mil for 11 you know depending on where you're ordering from already or if you have prime or whatnot you can get a good deal so here is the chromatography you can see a faint line where it stayed a little tiny bit kind of grayish and then it just went right up and I was sitting there holding that so it wasn't very long and it, it had a lot of movability and like I said thank you again to pen friend KS for sending the sample I really appreciate that <clears throat> Let's get into our other little notebooks. So we've got the little Moriman spiral notebook from Dezico. And here it is. And again, it, I can see a little bit of sheen on here, but not quite as... It's going to be more obvious to you when I show you the CVS Caliber notebook. Um, it's just a bright purple. And, and I saw shading here and there. So, you know... We'll look at all of the samples, but I, I wouldn't tout it for the shading, but you do get it sometimes. And I, keep in mind, too, I, I don't have flex nibs that I'm using or anything like that. So these are just steel nibs, and it's pretty straightforward, so it, you may have a different experience. You may have more shading is what I'm trying to get at. So there's the broad nib and the fine nib, and it did it just looked really, really beautiful on this paper. Okay. So next is the CVS Caliber 4x6 notebook. I use this paper a lot. Actually, I'm using it as my daily process notebook now. And I can have a ball because hardly anything bleeds through. Okay, there, there you can see that green sheen to the left. Um, it's quite pronounced, and it's, it's really interesting. Now, I don't... I think it would do mainly highlighting on the nibs that I have, but I'm interested if any of you have written with a flex nib with this, you might be getting all kinds of stuff that I don't get. So here it is, broad nib and fine nib. And this is the paper that sometimes I complain about um, because it can flatten out the, the ink color, but it actually is saturated enough to stay good on here. Um, it really is nice. <clears throat> so, Loistrum... Uh, 1917 dot grid. This is the pocket size, more or less. I think there's another name for that, but can't think of it right now. And it looked really nice. Now let's see if that went through, because in this paper, 
okay bled through where I painted it on heavy but the writing is appears to be okay you know I see where I boxed it maybe it, there's more shadowing but it's there's nothing bleeding through there I think this is a very well behaved ink okay and then let's hop right on to live notes this is Tamoy River paper in the 68 GSM oh my I've been messy <laughs> with this notebook this is getting this needs to be in a traveler's uh, cover I guess okay here we go right down here um Boy, did it stand out on this paper. Oh my goodness. I just felt like, wow, it popped on here. Um, here's the little painted on portion. And then the broad nib and the Lamy fine nib. Really, really pretty. Intense, but not so dark. Because even through the camera and all, the, all what we have to go through, you can still see that it's purple. Truly purple. Um, it bled through just where it was painted on a little bit. But we'll keep this handy so we can go right on to uh, the other kind of Tamoy River paper, the 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. Now, I got sheening on that, which can be seen a little bit more than that sample that went into the uh, ink journal. So it's green, kind of a greenish, quite pretty. If you are doing that with art, you might really enjoy that color. Because that's to me, that's quite unusual, and I like it. Um, here it is in the broad nib and the fine nib and it, it does go through when you paint this ink uh, this particular ink on but it's just shadowing on the rest so that's that's lovely now let's compare the two okay uh, in this case I did get more sheening I, I actually didn't get any on the um, 68 GSM and I did on the 52 GSM a more shade more shading in the paint part and uh, Gee, I, I would have to say a little bit more shading in the writing in this particular nib and case uh, But look how that just pops on that paper. I There is a difference um, Although it looks really nice on the white it really popped on that cream paper So just pointing that out because it was something I I got excited about. Okay, I did want to also show you how Tasha Murasaki compared. <clears throat> so, off to the left here is the Tasha Murasaki. Gosh, I hope I'm not making shadows. Let me try to get my hands out of the way. Um, you know, they're very similar, but, but the Tasha Murasaki seems to be a little tad bit darker coming out of the nib but it isn't as interesting when you're using painting and I kind of like the fact that I do really enjoy the purple being just a little bit lighter the waterman being just a little bit lighter so keep that in mind as we go on because we're going to look at uh, a comparison panel in a minute but let's look at Claire Fontaine 90 gram French rule paper um, a little bit of sheening came across in the painted on part or index but this just looks super good on here I did see some shading very subtle but it's there on the broad nib and then there's the Lamy fine nib but one thing about it I really felt like it it really flowed well um, there was no problems whatsoever with that so very interesting and, and no no bleed through on that paper okay Let's grab Rhodia 80 gram dot grid paper. Very little sheening is visible on, the, on my uh, sample here, but it just looks gorgeous. I mean, that is a very pretty purple. It just makes me shake my head how they could come up with so many different purples, you know, that are unique in their own right. Here's the broad nib and the fine nib. <clears throat> okay, and then one more. This is our cheapy uh, Georgia Pacific 20 pound copy paper Okay, and and it looks good on here. You do get a little feathering. Let me see if we can get that up there Where you can see it a little feathering. It's not horrid, but it's there you can see it around that box Especially let's see if we can get that Where you can look at it and then here it is in the fine nib where I thought it did just fine and I think you're always going to get some feathering on this paper, but I think it would be acceptable. Quite a bit of bleed through. Not surprising. It is a saturated color. It's quite, it, you know, intense. 
and this is cheap cheap paper so <laughs> that's what that's how it is okay let's check in on this and then we'll look at our comparison panel okay so this is pretty typical and yet you can still read it at this point not well though not you know most of that is gone certainly all of the color or just about all the color so we'll have to we'll wait and when I do the next preview uh, next ink profile you get to see the final okay so let's go ahead and bring on our today's comparison panel to try to get that on there I just make it a little sturdier I, I put a backing of a heavier cardboard and, and that's helping me for now and I've got a few other ideas too but as you know I'm juggling quite a few little uh, organizing projects here so it, right in the middle is our Waterman Tender Purple and when I see it compared to the others it's it just amazes me because I truly was thinking well you know Tasha Murasaki is the closest to real purple I've seen and then Roar and Klinger Casia is darker it has a, a different intensity to it but wow to see them side by side like this when I see these two side by side I like this one better the Waterman Tender Purple people have been telling me forever you guys have been telling me to check out the Waterman inks and I don't think it was so much stubbornness as just overwhelmedness <laughs> in terms of having so many new inks to try out and also having so many incoming but this really helped me to see these together like this um Die Mine Amazing Amethyst is one of my favorites but it tends to be too dark for me coming out of most of the nibs I love the complexity of it I truly do but uh, it just depends what I'm using uh, I guess it's the medium nib where I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the Tasha Murasaki. Um, Roar and Klinger Acacia is way too dark for me coming out of a nib. It's way too dark, but I love it because it just flows so well. And really, depending on lighting and, and everything else, it can look quite purple. It just depends. And then Diamine Imperial Purple, it's kind of the same thing in my world. I like it a lot, but I it's just too dark for me. So I ended up turning to inks like Monteverde Purple Rain, which is almost getting over there, almost toward what I would call magenta, you know, rather than a true purple that looks like what we learned in school or kindergarten purple. <laughs> and then Lamy Violet. I love Lamy Violet. <clears throat> I wish it was available in a bottle. So here's, uh, for comparison purposes, Noodler's Bay State Concord Grape, which is quite, quite a... <laughs> Um, I don't know whether they call it bulletproof, but it's quite permanent. It may not be completely. It moved around only a little in my test. And then much, much lighter is the J. Arbonne Violet Pensy. Um, that's too light for me, but it's pretty, and it has a lot of different uses. But Okay, I guess that pretty much does that. But what I wanted to show you was, um, let me just get it because, okay. So we'll keep in mind... Here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Knocking things all over. Here is our today's color, Waterman Tender Purple. So as I'm thinking about this color, let's see, I need to have something white near it or something. Maybe maybe that would help a little. I think it, it might. Okay. I'm thinking about what I already have. So this is something I must do every time is for myself. I don't know about you, but I have to kind of, you know, rein things in and slow the, the cart down a little and see, okay, what do I already have? So I have a bottle of Tasha Murasaki Purple, and it's gorgeous. It's really pretty. So it like this ink would have to get in line, you know, in terms of my wish list. I'll have to use this up <laughs> first. And then I got a free bottle of Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple, which didn't appear on the panel, but that was just because there's so many, and I don't need to show every single one. And that's a really pretty one. I've shared it with quite a few people in terms of samples uh, who have sent me, and we've, you know, I, I've, I've lightened that one considerably. That won't be around for long. It was a 30 mil. And then I ha also started with a 30 mil of Diamine Imperial Purple, which is just quite a bit quite a bit darker depending on your nib depending on lots of things I think I think vision has something to do with it and the fact that we don't keep our house completely bright at all times because of the heat okay then there's the beautiful and flowy uh, Roar and Klinger Casia 
And that's one of my favorite inks, even though it, it's a little darker than I'd like for my purple. Okay, and then, <laughs> I'm not counting these, and so please don't count these. Okay, here's J. Arbonne um, Amethyst de Laurel the, in the 1798. Now, this is one of my very favorite inks, despite the fact it's quite dark, but it shimmers, it flows for it. Oh, it's just, I love it. And then we start getting into the ones that may not be a traditional purple, but Bunga Box Lamont is just gorgeous, and it has incredible, I put super shading, just so I'd remember. So these are all the ones that I have a full bottle of. I went completely crazy with purple. Um, it, I, there's no other color I have more bottles of. And then Monteverde Purple Rain, which is gorgeous. I love it. It shades and it's bright, but at times I crave a more purple purple, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and then this will be the last one, I think. Well, maybe not, that I show you. Um, Sitz Cruznock Dark Orchid, which to me now does not seem purple at all. At, at the time, I thought of it as purple. Now I think of it as magenta or almost pink. And then Monteverde Rose Noir, which is just a, a very complex, beautiful ink that I have a small bottle of, thanks to a pen friend. This is gorgeous, but again, it doesn't feel that uh, craving for actual purple. What I, you know, it... it it's somewhere else. It's it's in a class of its own, I think. Okay, so that's it. So I didn't count them. One, two, oh my goodness. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not bragging. I'm actually outing myself, but <laughs> nine bottles of purple ink. So this is gorgeous, and the sample will do me really good this week. Uh, I've got uh, pen pal letters to write and so on and so I'm gonna you guys will be seeing some purple and that is it for this video but I am knee deep in purple that's the color that I'm doing right now and that's that's how this came about because all of a sudden I'm gonna get that comparison panel out again I, I love it it's um, it's got some beautiful inks on it. So all of a sudden I, I realized, oh, I had really wanted to look at this Waterman Tender Purple and really focus on it. And that's what these videos and um, uh, studies really helped me do. And, and hopefully it just shows you as well. So I'm going to continue sorting through my purple samples that I have purchased, that people have sent me, that have come in ink flights, <laughs> and get them organized, but it's a huge category. So, um, the only one bigger is my blues. So what did you think of Waterman Tender Purple? Do you have it already? Had you ever seen it? Oh, I meant to say, I went online and looked it up, and uh, it's, it's uh, crafted in France. And they have a long history, a 130-year history of making pens and I don't know how long they've made ink but wow and I have seen quite a bit on Troy LaPlante's uh, station I was going to say station channel he has a YouTube channel on fountain pens about his Waterman pens and inks and that was probably the first time it got on my radar and then now I'm starting to have a few samples to go through and I just just love it so let me know what you think and thank you very much for being here bye for now